All right, guys, so we're going to be looking at um, the cell cycle. Look at this fancy diagram here. Can anybody tell me which part of this fancy diagram is mitosis? Which part of this fancy diagram is mitosis? Which phase in the cell cycle represents mitosis? Good, Chase, Brooke, absolutely. I'm only going to jump in there. Yes, the M phase. Pretty easy to remember because M stands for mitosis. But look at how, what a small chunk of the actual cell cycle makes up mitosis. And I think that a lot of times we spend a large portion of instruction talking about the M phase, talking about mitosis, because there's lots of really cool things we can observe in mitosis. It's a really cool way to make observations of, of the nucleus of a cell and look at what's happening in there. But the majority of the cell cycle is actually interphase. And interphase, remember, is between stages of mitosis. Interphase isn't just nothing. A lot of times you'll think that maybe interphase is just, you know, when the cell is busy doing its thing and being a cell and nothing's happening much except for maybe some cell stuff, but that's about it. But really, a lot of important things happen in interphase. We have interphases divided up into the G1, S, and G2 phases. G standing for growth. So a lot of growth phases here. The cell is growing. Um, there's a, we've got to have a, a bunch of, um, what do we call those little organelles? They're going to make copies of themselves. Or the organelles are going to be, there's going to be copies made of the organelles. Um, the DNA has to replicate during the interphase because the M phase, remember, is just when the nucleus separates into two two new nuclei, and then um, the cell completely separates in what's called cytokinesis, right? So that's what's happening during the M phase. But in order for that to be successful, you have to have two sets of DNA going into the M phase. Welcome, Wyatt. It's great to have you here today. So let's look at some uh, pictures here of this is just M phase. Well, no, take the back, back up a step here. Interphase is everything else, right? So this is just M phase. The interphase is, is the other three quarters of the cell cycle. So M phase, mitosis, can be divided up into prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And then you all are going to be like, what's missing at the end? What, what is missing at the end of uh, the telophase? What comes, what comes afterwards? Somebody want to, I just said it before. Somebody want to remind me what happens when the cell separates? What do we call that? I'll give you a hint. It starts with cyto. Cytokinesis. Okay, so the separating of the cell. Now, cytokinesis is not part of mitosis. Cytokinesis is just after mitosis is done, then you have cytokinesis, and that's still kind of part of the, the interphase, I guess. It's not technically considered part of mitosis. Uh, mitosis is just prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And what's happening in mitosis is that the um, nuclear material, DNA here, welcome Jed, is thickening and shortening and um, it's organizing itself and dividing up into, you know, two halves and then it splits up and you end up with two new cells, right? But remember that before this could even happen, the DNA in here had to have replicated itself. So you have twice as much as you would normally have. 
So you have twice as much DNA in here. And then it divides up <clears throat> on the middle of the cell. And then half of the DNA goes one way and half goes the other way. And it's, and it's purposeful. It's exactly half all the same chromosomes are going, you know, in opposite directions. Mitosis makes a clone of the original cell. So the, everything is the same, the same exact copy of each chromosome. And that's important when we start to talk about something later called meiosis, where we're not dealing with clones anymore. We're dealing with um, totally new organisms, totally new types of cells that have been kind of recombined and reconfigured and all sorts of fun stuff happens there. That gives us diversity within a population. So looking at this, one of the first things that has to happen is that the DNA, which is these long fibers, just these little twisty um, double helixes, they have to like kind of twist up more. And they keep twisting like corkscrewing until they're shorter and fatter and easier to manage. So otherwise they get all tangled. We don't want them to get all tangled when they start moving around. So they're going to shorten and thicken. And then the membrane, the nuclear membrane that surrounds the nucleus is going to dissolve. And then we have these little, um, we have these little uh, nuclear spindles. They're like almost like little fingers that come in and attach themselves to the pieces, the shorter pieces of um, DNA there, the, the chromosomes, and they actually pull them toward the center of the cell, arrange them all the way in the center. They line them up. And then those same nuclear spindles will pull that whole cell apart. A new nuclear membrane will form around each nucleus in telophase. And then finally, this is going to break apart and a new cellular membrane forms and that's cytokinesis. Okay. So the question is, where do we find the majority of our cells? Are they in interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase? We learn about all the different phases, and maybe you can recognize them. You know, let's do a little recognition practice first. I have, I have a little quiz at the end. I want to see if you guys can get it. Or maybe I don't. Here we go. Maybe you can recognize this. <clears throat> what phase of mitosis do you think this is? And now, this is a poorly worded sentence. Let's say phase of the cell cycle. Phase of the cell cycle. Because obviously, I've tried to make a point that some of these phases that we talk about aren't parts of the cell cycle, or parts of mitosis, but parts of the cell cycle. So we have interphase. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase. Those are your options. Interphase, prophase, anaphase. Inter pro interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase. Inter, pro, meta, ana, telo. A lot of prophase, a lot of prophase. Personally, I would say this was interphase. So chase high five. Because I don't think that the chromosomes are really that short and thick in this particular example. All right. I'm going to go back, go back, go back. All right, what about this guy? Look at this guy. I'm switching ahead. I'm kind of going a little bit. Samuel, is that your new prediction there, or is that from before? Old one. Oh, well, try again, because you're on the right track. Yeah, this one. Brooke says pro face, she thinks. 
Samuel says, okay, prophase. I think Mrs. Peachy told me the answer there. Yes. So what you'll notice for this one, as opposed to the last one, is that there's no nuclear envelope anymore. And it's a lot easier to see individual um, chromosomes in here. Now, see how there's a nuclear envelope here still? Prophase, the nuclear envelope dissolves. And then the chromosomes are going to shorten and thicken. So this, we can tell, is prophase. Now, what about this guy? What do you think this one is? Chase is saying metaphase. Right? Metaphase. Excellent. Yep, so this one is easy. Lines up in the middle. Metaphase, right? Then we're going to go back a little bit. I'm just going in order, so obviously you guys are there's You can pretty much guess these. So now we, see, we can almost see the spindle fibers there, can't you? You can see these spindle fibers pulling the chromosomes. And this is your uh, centromere. It's like pulling it toward the center. So this is anaphase. Notice that the, nu the uh, nuclear material or the chromosomes here, they're not in any kind of a nuclear, there's no envelope that surrounds them at all. So they're still in transit. When we get to telophase, we should see booger. Yeah, we're starting to see them towards the center here. We can actually see that a new cell membrane is starting to form as well. I don't see the nuclear envelope, though. I don't like that part. Guess number 11 shows us a little bit better. You can kind of see a nuclear envelope, but it's, it's sometimes those are not the easiest parts to see. But this would be telophase. And then we can see here that the full nuclear membrane is now formed, or excuse me, the four, excuse me, the full cellular membrane has now formed, and this is cytokinesis. Question at all, Ryan? These are different cells, different microscope, different staining techniques. Kind of gives you almost a better view here in a lot of cases. Oh, okay. He says he's lagging. All right, so going back to okay, to this one here. What I wanted to, to do for this, um, one of the coolest things you can do for this is you can actually take microscope slides. And if you guys were in a traditional bricks and mortar class with me, that's what I would have you do is take microscope slides. And I would have you go through the slides. Um, or a lot of times what we would do is we would take a piece of onion skin. And you can actually make a slide of the onion skin. And we would be able to count the number of cells that we find in each one of these different phases of mitosis or different phases of the cell cycle. Okay? Which is kind of cool. Harder to do online. So instead I have a picture. Okay? So what I want you to do here is we are going to go through each one of these and we're going to determine which phase each of these cells is in. And then we're going to determine the ratio of cells in each phase. Can I make a pie chart? Okay. So, here, so inner phase is divided up into the G1, S, and G2 phases. The G1 phase is where the entire cell is going to grow. It's going to virtually double in size. And all of the organelles are going to make copies of themselves. So we'll have double the number of ribosomes and mitochondria and Golgi bodies and you know, endoplasmic reticulum and all the other fancy organelles that are found within the cell. Um, then during the S phase, you have DNA replication that takes place in the nucleus. So this is where the DNA makes copies of itself. So because by the time you start prophase, you're going to have two full sets of DNA. Okay. And then the G2 phase is where that proofreading takes place. So make sure everything is spelled correctly, all the replication was done correctly, any errors are fixed along the way, prepares the cell for cell division, 
Then at the end of the G2 phase, the nuclear envelope is 